I want to share a really simple message today because as many of you know who've been on the channel, I am waiting for God to fulfill something that really he has to do. It's got to be a miracle. It, it really at this point has to be a miracle. And what that is, is that I've given up everything to do what I'm doing with him. He had me slowly give up my careers, giving away money at times, providing for someone, living on my retirement, living on my savings. And now I'm waiting for him to sell a property so I can finish out my time here. And that's what I'm supposed to be living on. But the property has not sold. And I now do not have money to live another month. By the way, I'm not asking you for anything. So don't think that for one second. God is going to do this. This is his miracle. This is his, uh, you know, his glory. In these last bits of this, I've gone to some real dark places. I've gone to wondering... A lot of things like what would I do if he didn't fulfill this what would I do if I gave up everything to serve him without taking anything from anybody so that it wasn't a stumbling block to them and he did and he was not faithful how would I feel what would I do what would this mean it just you know I've gone to some really really dark places and a couple nights ago I was having a really hard time and out of all of that darkness, I heard him tell me, the devil is testing you. The devil is testing you. And I felt it just like when Jesus said to Peter, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. And it really gave that just that little bit of perspective and also being able to hear him say that made the biggest difference for me. And so you just start walking yourself back into the perspective of what the truth is. And the truth is that God is real and that God can. He can do anything he wants. And it's not as though there are not opportunities. Like it's not as though he doesn't even have something to work with, which God doesn't really need anything to work with. He can make something to work with. But the building is there is what I'm saying. Like the building is there. He can make it sell. He can, you know, bypass the building and do something different. But I have put every single thing on the line. And the spirit testifies that I am his. The fruit testifies that I am his. God does not give wisdom and understanding to people who maintain their backup plan and teach people to give counterfeit tithing and ask for offerings and, you know, take for themselves. He gives to people like me. He gives understanding to people who seek him with all their heart, mind, and soul, who don't take from his children tearing the hooves off their sheep, off his sheep and teaching them false doctrines that their itching ears want to hear so that they give more money. I've said the things that I was afraid to say. I've said the things that he told, the things he whispered in my ears, I shouted from the rooftops. That's what I do every day. I've confronted people who retaliated against me. I've confronted people who thank God had a beautiful heart for him and changed and listened. I've confronted people who were close to me who were lying about the heart that they had for God. I've been that watchman. I've been that servant. I know what I've done. I know my heart. I know what I've heard from him. And yet, God can, but if he isn't, it's so important for us to go back to him with a true and humble heart. And to say that, I know you can. I believe these are the things you've promised. Are we still on track, Father? Are we still on track for the things that you've told me? Are we still on track for what your word says, which is if you seek first the kingdom of heaven and righteousness, your needs are going to be added to you. God does not forsake his children. He is faithful. Are we on track for that? Am I yours? Am I in your favor? You know, the one thing that God has told me, he has told me nothing about what he's going to do with this building or how he's going to take care of me. Absolutely nothing except for what he told me before when he promised me that he would take care of that and that I was to stay in the place where he called me, that he set me up in this house and this is where I am to stay. Those are the only things that he has told me that because I asked him, you want me to, you know, years ago, you want me to sell the building and, and the house? I don't care where I go. I'll go buy something in a remote area or I'll rent. What do you want me to do? But during this whole time, he's required me to trust in what he has said. 
And he's required me to come to him and continue to ask him, am I in your favor? Am I yours? And that is the one thing that he has proven every single day through this whole thing in miraculous ways that I am his. It is the one thing that he has spoken to me every single day in some way he has demonstrated and confirmed that I am his. And I'm realizing today that the reason he's done that is because when it comes down to things like this, when it comes down to you being in a desperate situation where a miracle has to take place and you're really holding on to your faith or during those 45 days when you're up against a wall and the Antichrist is slaughtering Christians, and Christians are being told, you're either going to worship this, you're either going to bow down and receive the mark of its name, or you're going to die. And God says during that time, it's the worst time that has ever happened in the history of the world. But during that time, lift your head, lift your heads because redemption is nigh. How are you going to believe that? Are you sure, Lord? Are you sure that I'm yours? I don't feel you right now. I don't see you. But these are the promises that you've said. I know your word. I know what I've done. I know that I've trusted. I know how I've lived. The one thing you're going to need to know is not whether that mega congregation at your mega church is going to be bringing offerings and tithes, counterfeit tithes, because tithing was fulfilled through sacrifice. You're not going to be able to delude yourself into believing that you are in Christ because he's either going to confirm or he's going to terrorize the wicked. He will terrorize the wicked. Do you know how I would be feeling right now? I would not be able to handle this if I did not know the work that I do every day the confirmation of the Holy Spirit that I am his, that I have taken nothing for myself, I would not be able to stand right now. I would be terrorized because you can't really delude yourself into thinking that God is going to take care of you when you have just been outright evil and wicked and lived on your own justification. This is why I tell you, you got to be honest about this work and you got to be honest about whether you're doing it because your justification won't mean anything in the end. And there is indeed a period of time where God allows the wicked to be deluded, where he allows them to be deceived that they're his and, oh, this counterfeit Christianity, it's just the way to go, isn't it? Even in the news, like when CBN comes across my newsfeed, I'm just like, and they're talking about how Christians are being persecuted. Oh my gosh, what happened? Did someone open their door on your car? What do you mean per Christians are being persecuted? What are those Christians doing that they're being persecuted? They out there preaching the word of God truly? Telling the truth about God? You got to distinguish whether Christians are being persecuted or God is bringing judgment on counterfeit Christianity. I don't see any Christians being persecuted. They're being burned at the stake. They're being slandered, told that there's a demon in them. God is bringing judgment, that's for sure. But there are very few Christians and therefore there are very few Christians being persecuted. That's the truth. Whatever narrative is being made up in order to justify counterfeit Christianity, in order to put them into a template of what needs to happen before Jesus comes back, if it's not true, don't expect God to testify to it. Don't expect his fruit to be born. I could not in good conscience sit here and continue to live day after day with the courage and the faith and the trust that I have that God is going to do this if he was not testifying every day you have been a faithful servant and God does not testify that to people who have not so they will not be able to go through these kinds of trials and tests guys make sure your conscience is clean make sure that you get up every single day and you listen to what god is raising in you and that you repent and you continue to clean yourself up because there's a lot that needs to get cleaned out of us there's a lot of work we haven't been doing all of our lives that needs to be done and while jesus does reconcile us we are still required to do that work in order to be reconciled 
You have to listen to the entire covenant of what Jesus has said. Your, the responsibilities that we have for our past sins have not disappeared. That's not the covenant. They have not suddenly vanished into thin air. It is through repentance. Baptism is a baptism of repentance. If you are so wicked to think that you can just keep dunking underwater and that washes you of responsibility, I don't think there's any way that a person who thinks that way can be saved because you haven't loved truth. You're not looking at what Jesus said when he was here. You're not listening to the message that John the Baptist preached. You're not listening to the messages of the witnesses or the apostles. You're just not loving truth, if that's what you believe. And the proof is going to be in the pudding, guys. The proof will be when you are backed against the wall, what's coming out of you? What's coming out of your mouth? Are you a liar? You ch continuing to try to justify yourself? We had someone do that this week. If lies are coming out of your mouth, you are not his. The Bible says that those who are lying, those who breathe out lies will perish. So if that's what, if that continues to come out of your mouth because you are so afraid of man, you are more afraid of man than you are of God, oh, you better clean that up. You had better go and clean your house and repentance had better be coming out of you. I don't know why someone would be so stupid and foolish to give up their salvation, to give up the body, to give up God so that they can, what? Be seen a particular way? I mean, it's kind of silly because when people are lying, others usually know about that. And God has said everything's going to be laid bare. So you either bear it now or you're going to bear it all later and be destroyed. What is in your heart is coming out of your right hand, your forehead, and your mouth. Your right hand are your deeds, your behaviors. Your forehead represents your thoughts and beliefs. Your mouth represent you know is what's coming out what you're speaking what you're declaring how you talk what you say and it reveals your heart it reveals whether faith is really in you whether the fear of god is really in you so so many times when i'm confronting people they say oh god well god knows my heart their behavior i'm confronting them about their behavior i'm confronting them about what they're saying and they will say to me no oh well god knows my heart they don't even have the sense to realize that God does know your heart and that what's coming from your heart is coming out of your behaviors, what you speak, what you believe, and what you think. So it's not real hard for anyone to know what's in your heart. If your behaviors, what you speak, your beliefs, and your thoughts are not lining up, there's a heart issue. You can't continue to behave, think, believe, and speak in a particular way, but delude yourself into thinking that you're in Christ if those ways are not congruent with Christ. So when your fruit is not good, you need to admit that it's not good, and then you need to go work in your heart. You don't just, you know, buckle down real quick and try to control your behaviors or what you say and think that your heart's going to be changed. That's not going to happen, guys. Eventually, you get exposed. And we've had that happen over and over with people who did not have a heart for God. Take some time each day to look at the fruit that you're bearing. What is that fruit telling you? Are you his or are you not? Are you being perfected in love? What needs to be corrected Every one of us has this work to do on a daily basis. If you don't have time to do it, what you're saying is you don't have time to be in this covenant and that is, that's going to lead to death. You're saying you don't have time for God, like it, he's not your priority. You have other things that you have made your priority in this life. Please be honest with yourself so that you can be honest with God, so that you can be honest with others. If the love of God is in you, that's what you're going to do. And when the day of trial comes, when the day of testing comes, you're going to be ready. And you're going to you're going to be looking back. You're going to be wondering like is God going to do these things he promised and you're going to be running through this in your mind. Okay, was there any place that I stepped apart from him? Is there anything that I've not done on a daily basis? Am I doing this? Am I living this out? 
And if you can answer those questions affirmatively that you have been in Christ and that you have given him everything you've got, you will be able to stand. You will be able to stand the way that I'm standing right now. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have had moments where I thought I am not going to make it through this. And I know what I have done with him on a daily basis. And even looking back, you know, let's be honest about this, okay? Looking back, I know everything that I gave up for him. I know everything that I do on a daily basis. And yet, I also know that I cannot justify myself, that I have not done anything perfectly, but I know 100% I have done it to the very best that I could possibly do. That's what it means that Christ will cover me. He has not absolved me of any of the responsibility that I have in the covenant. He has merely done his part to cover the rest, to cover the margin of error that I cannot cover because I can never be perfect. But I can truly stand here with a clear conscience and tell you, I know that I am in him. I know what I have done with him and I know that he is faithful. That's what he requires of me right now is to stand in that and to continue to remind myself, even as he has been kind enough to remind me that I am his. Please discern this message with God. Please apply the things that I'm saying. Don't just listen to my videos as a means of entertainment. What's God going to do in Carrie's life? What's he doing today with her? That's not why I'm putting these videos out. I put these videos out as a testimony to you that this is how you need to live as well.